Open world games just keep getting bigger, more detailed, and more interesting. This year, there's a whole lot of them that we just really want to get our hand done for one reason or another. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, new open world games to play in 2023. Starting off with number 25, it's everywhere, and I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you I know exactly what this game is. It's called Everywhere, it's an open world game. Leslie Benzies is the guy in charge, it's a new studio. The whole point, he says, is that this is supposed to be a less restrictive open world game. It looks kind of sci-fi, it looks really ambitious, and I mean, we're talking about a guy who's been involved in some of the best open world games of all time, the GTA series, so obviously it's worth a shot. Everywhere is supposedly coming out next year. Well, not necessarily everywhere, but at least Microsoft Windows. And number 24 is Rise of the Ronin, a pretty interesting new title coming from Koei Tecmo, the developers of the Neo series. It looks like a pretty different game from Neo. It does not look like a Souls-like. In fact, it looks kind of like if Assassin's Creed was the Japanese equivalent of a cowboy game. It looks like there's going to be a lot of fun fighting. There's guns, there's swords, there's swords that do things that swords can't actually do. Grappling hook swords? I don't know. It takes place in 1863 Japan, and just to be frank, that's a perfect setting for a game. The waning years of the Wild West have turned out to be a great setting for video games, and people don't realize that Japan had an equivalent. Rise of the Ronin is coming to PlayStation 5 sometime during the year. We don't have a date yet, but uh, it looks like a good one. And number 23 is Atomic Heart. As you know, a USSR Bioshock, basically. Obviously, there's a lot more going than just that, but that's a pretty good way to sum it up. This game takes place in an absolutely beautiful alternate Soviet Union where robotics have made these huge leaps. There's integration with biotics in some kind of very intriguing plot that will no doubt involve a mystery and the nature of the machine. Atomic Heart is landing on the PlayStations, the Xboxes, and PC February 21st. At number 22 is Crimson Desert, which comes to us from Pearl Abyss, the developers of Black Desert Online. This was originally going to be a prequel to the famed online game. However, it is actually not. Development resulted in something they just considered completely different. And although it does run on the same engine, an upgraded one to be exact, Crimson Desert is going to set itself in medieval times. It is a fantasy game and it is single player. Primarily. Allegedly, there's some multiplayer elements, but I don't know exactly what they are. It's been mostly billed as a single player action RPG that doesn't have a set date yet, but is coming in 2023 to the PlayStations, the Xboxes, and PC. At number 21 is Skull and Bones, a game that has been in the works a long, long time. Originally came out of the naval battles of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, was going to be an MMO spinoff, and then just became its own thing. It's set in the Indian Ocean. It is open world, albeit much more ship-oriented, and involves what it's calling tactical action. I suspect it's going to play very much like the ship battles in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, except it's its own game. I love it, I've wanted it for a very long time, and I'm excited to play it. It's gonna land on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC on March 9th. At number 20 is Doke V, an open world creature collector and adventure game that looks to encroach upon Pokemon's area, and as far as performance, I'm guessing this game's gonna look a lot better. The last two Pokemon games came out on the Switch. It's outdated hardware, doesn't run great. This is a really colorful, really unique looking take on a Monster Hunter slash collector that's coming to PC with single and multiplayer options. It's coming to us from Pearl Abyss, the same people who made Black Desert Online. We already talked about them a moment ago. This looks like an interesting game. Uh, if it plays as good as it looks, it's definitely got something to it. I really like the visual style, and again, I'm just interested to see how it plays. We don't have a date, but like I said, Doke V is landing on Microsoft Windows sometime this year. And number 19 is Avowed, an RPG coming to us from Obsidian Entertainment. So Avowed basically seems like a first-person Skyrim-y type game 
taking place in the Pillars of Eternity world of Eora. Avowed has got a really cool look to it. Um, like I said, it does look kind of like a Skyrim-ish game, but also it doesn't look anything like Skyrim. It's got a very different color palette. Doesn't look like it's going for realism in particular. It really looks like an Obsidian game, and that makes me really excited. Avowed is coming to the Xbox Series and PC. Don't have a date yet, but sometime during the year. At number 18 is Ark 2, the sequel to Ark Survival Evolved. It's got Vin Diesel, it's got Souls-like melee combat, and it's got dinosaurs and all the other stuff that you get with Ark. Honestly, Ark's a really interesting game, if maybe a imperfect one, but the sequel looks like it's really shaping up to be kind of what the original promised to be. Not that the original is anything to laugh at. Well, sometimes it is, but that's more intentional, I think. Ark is going to launch as an exclusive on Xbox Series and PC. Exactly what day, we don't know yet, but it will be sometime this year. At number 17 is Season, A Letter to the Future, a game in which you ride around a really crazy, cel-shaded, beautiful cartoon, but also kind of breathtakingly realistic in certain ways, game where you document and record things going on in the world before the world ends, because apparently the world is ending. There's a cataclysm. I don't know if you can prevent it. I don't know if that's the point of the game. If you can't, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be a pretty depressing game, despite how beautiful it is. Season A Letter to the Future is coming out on PS4 and 5 on January 31st. And number 16 is Sons of the Forest, a sequel to The Forest. Now, what worked about The Forest is that on top of being a really good survival game, it also is a totally bonkers cannibal story with mutants and freaks. In the first game, you're trying to find your kid. Now you're trying to find a billionaire. You're an elite soldier, so you probably got a little bit more up your sleeve than a random father running around in the woods. But you also survived the helicopter crash, so you got some injuries. Apparently, the ante has been upped with the mutants. We've seen some of it. And also, there's a three-armed companion that you'll be able to run around with. I mean, not much has changed from the original premise pretty damn good looking survival game with the bonkers cannibal story and mutants. Sons of the Forest is landing on PC February 23rd. At number 15 is Assassin's Creed Mirage. What's being billed as a return to the series roots, moving a little bit away from the role-playing stuff of recent Assassin's Creed games, and getting back into the more linear stealth storytelling of the original Assassin's Creed series. Still going to take place in an open world. I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, I don't have a problem with the new Assassin's Creed games at all, but I am kind of excited to have a game that's more like the originals. Assassin's Creed Mirage has come to the PlayStations, the Xboxes, and PC sometime this year. And number 14 is Where Winds Meet, an open world martial arts action RPG. It takes place near the beginning of the Northern Song Dynasty during the Twilight of the Ten Kingdoms. You play as a swordsman, you make a lot of different choices like safeguarding the empire, fighting it, blah, blah, blah. It's a very pretty looking game. It's apparently very open-ended. We don't have an exact date, but the game is PC exclusive as of now and certainly looks very interesting. At number 13 is Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland, a spin-off title of The Division, obviously. Set in the same universe, except set in the Pacific Northwest in a town called Silver Creek. This one's actually free to play, and its primary mode is a PvP with 45 different players, with another mode that's PvE with missions and objectives. It's got a cool look to it, and The Division's a pretty good looter shooter, but it's also free to play, so my my hope is that that doesn't mess up what The Division does right. Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland comes to the PlayStations, the Xboxes, and PC sometime this year. And number 12 is Dead Island 2, which takes place on the island of Los Angeles and San Francisco. Not exactly an island, but a very large chunk of the world, which is going to be infected after the island incident. Apparently, the combat is going to see a bit of a revamp. And of course, the world is much, much larger than the original games. And the story of Dead Island continues. Dead Island 2 is coming to the PlayStations, the Xboxes, and PC April 28th. 
At number 11 is Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, a very long-awaited full-on sequel to the Stalker series. The first Stalker game came out way back in 2007. The second game, Clear Sky, came out in 2008. Third game, Call of Pripyat, came out in 2009. And this game was announced at the same time. The developer GSC Game World actually had to disband at one point, and there has been a fair amount of scandal involving this game but it is finally coming this year. Stalker is just a really unique game. If you go back to the originals, they certainly have their flaws, but there's also so many interesting systems at play at any given time that I'm just really interested to see Stalker in a next generation situation where everything works completely and all of the lessons of the first have been learned. Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl is coming to the Xbox series and PC sometime this year. And number 10 is Forspoken. It's a game we've talked about actually quite a bit here. It's story is basically you're a woman from New York and you get transported to a magical fantasy land and want to get back. The real thing that's attracting people to this game, of course, is not the story. That is, I mean, something that could turn out very good and something that could turn out very bad depending on its execution. But the traversal in this open world game just looks like nothing else. It looks fantastic. There is a demo that has split people pretty intensely. There's a lot of people that absolutely love it. And then some people who really do not like it. And to me, that's always a signal that a game is going to be pretty interesting. There's a reason why a bunch of people love it. And also there's a reason why a bunch of people hate it. I obviously tend to wait for the full game to make big judgments. And Forspoken is landing on PS5 and PC on the 24th. And number nine is Redfall, a new game from Arcane. As longtime viewers will know, I'm a big Arcane fanbird. Redfall is kind of a different looking game for them. Basically, vampires have taken over this town called Redfall, and in some ways it looks like Left 4 Dead, and then when you watch it, it doesn't really look like Left 4 Dead. Arcane always has something interesting to say and do with its games, so I'm pretty interested to see exactly how this one shakes out. This game's landing on Xbox Series and Windows sometime in the first half of the year. And number eight is Hogwarts Legacy, a game where you hang out in Hogwarts and you know the world of wizarding and all that. You make a character and you go through the fifth year at Hogwarts in the 1890s. It's an action RPG in a big open world Hogwarts. Like, what more could a Harry Potter fan ask for? Besides, the game is coming to the Playstations, the Xboxes, PC, and somehow Nintendo Switch on different dates throughout the year. Firstly, on the next-gen stuff on February 10th, then last-gen April 4th, and Switch on July 25th. And number seven is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, a game that we don't have a large amount of information on, but Avatar, of course, rakes in large, large, large amounts of cash for reasons, and they're making a game. You'll play as one of the Navi, and the story will not be an adaption of any of the movies. It's actually going to be a standalone story, which I think is a good idea, and that's basically the extent we know about it. I think they're really going to need to uh, announce more about this game. They believe it's going to come out sometime during 2023, and if not early 2024, we'll have more information as it appears. Right now, it's slated for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC, so we'll see. And number six is Diablo 4. I mean, it's Diablo 4. It's a huge game from a huge series that has defined so much about top-down action RPGs, and everybody's been pretty excited about this game for quite a while. Diablo 4 is coming to the Playstations, the Xboxes, and PC June 6th. And number five is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which is not the same thing as the Arkham games, but is developed by them and takes place in the Arkham verse. However, rather than taking place in Gotham, it's taking place in Metropolis. Brainiac invaded Earth, brainwashed the Justice League, including Batman, who is not dead. However, Joker is, because again, this takes place in the Arkham verse. Uh, you're the Suicide Squad, so you got Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Deadshot, and King Shark. You switch between them in control or play four-player co-op, which is 
a great idea. And it kind of looks like what Gotham Knights should have been, or maybe Gotham Knights just shouldn't have existed. It really looks good. Like, look at the footage of this game. It looks great. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is coming to PS5, Xbox Series, and PC May 26th. And number four is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order, the Star Wars Souls-like that, of course, I think really did a great job of adapting that formula to a Star Wars story with the Jedi, etc. This one is set five years after Fallen Order, around the same time the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is set. As you might guess, being a Jedi is not exactly a safe prospect, particularly as time goes on, and I'm ready for more of this game. I'm very happy they decided to make a sequel to this. It's landing on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC March 17th. And number three is Marvel's Spider-Man 2, the sequel to both Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales. It'll be continuing the plot of these games and not using Miles Morales' new costume, thank God. I'm pretty excited to see where this game goes because obviously there's some loose ends from both plots that I'm sure will get tied up. And Venom is making an appearance. So Spider-Man fans are kind of getting their money's worth, I think, out of Spider-Man 2. It's basically what we really want. It is going to be landing on the PS5 sometime in the fall of 2023. And number two is a heavy hitter. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is, of course, coming out this year. And, of course, I'm expecting that uh, this is going to generate a very large amount of discussion. It looks beautiful, obviously, and continues the story of the first Breath of the Wild. It's probably the highest profile Zelda sequel to just retain the previous game and everything that happened, all of its events, etc., etc. There are a lot of unanswered questions about this game, but that's part of the fun is it not legend of zelda tears of the kingdom is coming out may 12th on the nintendo switch and finally at number one it's starfield it was gonna come out last year it got delayed till this year it's skyrim in space according to todd howard and this is gonna be a huge game how could it not first off it's the first xbox exclusive Bethesda RPG, so that's already a big thing. And allegedly, the universe that this game takes place in is very, very big. I'm really excited for it. It's creation engine, but I don't know, maybe Bethesda understands that they have to do better than the buggy messes they've released in the past. The fact they delayed past what was essentially like the perfect date, November 11th, which is the anniversary of Skyrim, makes me think they're prioritizing the right things over fancy launches and yeah, I'm excited. I've been excited. Starfield's gonna be great. It's landing on Xbox Series and PC probably in the fall, but we will have more information on its launch as it becomes available. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.